He is falling at his feet and touching the wife and telling the wife, Wife, my reputation, my entire reputation is like this granite stone. Strong. Unbreakable. Granite is strong as rock in the world. You can't break it. But one crack comes that in the granite stone, he splits apart. My entire reputation now, I put at your feet. Please protect my reputation. What a powerful meaning here. What a one indiscretion can put shame on you. What a powerful message. Yet I remember on a previous occasion, when one doctor was married, one, uh, one girl, this was a doctor got late married, 40 years old. So he is used to his ways. You know. I still remember this ceremony, uncle of mine. They went to this, he, he followed all the ceremony. In fact, he wanted to smoke so badly, you know, he was, he wanted his, his, his irritation. Anyway, finally they came to the army part. No one told him, they told him, do, do, he was doing, do. He came to the army part, they told him, in fact, the girl's leg and put it in the army. Arranged marriage, not love marriage. Why should I tell you? He's asking the man, do that, do. Why? I said, take and put, take and put, no, 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 he must take it. Why? Of course, the adults couldn't expect you, why? You know, no. Tell you what it is. You know that, and then, can you imagine? You go to a Christian wedding ceremony, look at the vows, you know. You know, they say all kinds of vows, you know, and then to death, do us part. Okay, now they put death or divorce, doesn't matter, you know. Do us part. Don't laugh, Hindus are coming very soon. <laughs> Islam. You know, Islam, they will not contact the wedding, the Imam will not contact unless you pass an exam. They have this, 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 this uh, public exam, you know. Now, Hinduism is the most complicated wedding ceremony in the world. No one knows what's happening. <laughs> no vows. The only wedding, no vows. <laughs> Dear Pastor, do you know, do you know that the most incredible, beautiful marriage vows on Hinduism, it's called Saptapada, the seven steps. And each, North and South Indians have a different time when you do this, you know. The North Indians do it when they go around the fire. South Indians, and the Sri Lankan people do it when you, from the first time you get up the Manavara and go towards the Ammi, you know, that, that seven steps, you know. Well, I, heard, I knew about this. When my cousin got married, lawyer got married here, I went to this temple place you now. I said, Ayah, I said, listen, you are contacting all these weddings. You are chanting, who you know that marriage vows are being chanted? The marriage vows not, I mean, but the priest is chanting it. The priest is chanting the marriage vows in proxy for the married wife and married groom. Of course, the wife don't know he's chanting all this. Okay. So I told this priest, no, yeah, you're chanting all these, doing all these marriages, you're chanting the, your marriage vows, your marriage is very, going on very well, the marriage you're conducting all collapsing. Okay? <laughs> so, so I said, listen, for my cousin, I want him to repeat the marriage vows in English. I don't care. He said, yes, yes, do, do it. So I had a mic there and I, I had a translation and then one for one step. You know what the reason? My dear, I will guard you, guide you, cherish you with my life. Then the girl will say, you know, I will look after you, I will love you. I mean, so beautiful the marriage song I told years ago. My, my, my cousin was so embarrassed because during his courtship, he never told such beautiful words. <laughs> I would like, I am telling this, I am telling temple, temple authorities, I am telling Dalama Temple so many times, do not allow a wedding to be conducted here. Are you want given money? Eh? Every marriage couple, Hindu hall, before they can let them come to one or two days before, one week before, explain to them the inner significance rituals you are doing. Let them take half one hour to come and explain. This will enrich the wedding ceremony of theirs now. And have someone explaining this. These are some of the track programs you are trying to do. Now another one, this, this lawyer, this doctor. Doctor, his son had gone to New Zealand to do aeronautic engineering. Now the son is coming back. He calls me, Vijayka, I want your help. I said, what? My son has gone to New Zealand to aeronautic engineering. He's coming back. He's come back already. He wants to become a Christian. Can you please help me? I said, brother, if you want me to talk bad about Christianity, I cannot. Why, you know? Because I'm Hindu. Yamadam samadam, eham sat prabhadu vadanti. If I condemn another religion, I condemn my own religion. Let the other fool condemn his religion, doesn't realize what God is one. But I will not do that. My religion says, Eham Sat, Vipra God is one, truth is one, wise men know him by many names. Fools divide. 
But I won't condemn Christianity. I know some more because I devotee, I also have an altar, I have Buddha, Christian, and Christ, everybody. God is one for me. But if you want me to tell him about Christian, Hinduism, I'll tell him. So they brought the boy. Now I'm a very busy girl, but I had to spend three hours with this, 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 this boy. I'll tell you what happened. This boy came, very nice boy, polite fellow, polite, good looking, dashing young man. Before we could start, he said, Uncle, forgive me, Uncle, can I ask you a question before we start? Say, yes, son, ask yourself. Uncle, God will always tell the truth, yes or not? You're pretty aeronautic engineers asking a dumb civil servant. I'm not a civil servant, you know. <laughs> Uncle, God will always tell the truth, yes or no? I knew there was a trap somewhere in the question. <laughs> So I answered, I said, see, it depends upon your perception of truth. I also check. <laughs> it depends upon your perception of truth. He replied, Uncle, how can you talk about truth is truth? How can they perceive the perception of truth? I said, okay, listen, I am only a civil servant, you know, you are not getting here. But let me explain the scientific man I said. If I take a piece of ice and put here in front of you and tell this ice, it is truth. In 10 minutes time, there's no more truth, it's water. In fifth, and half an hour's time, it disappear. So what is truth? So truth is tempered by time and space. If you understand the simple law, then we can proceed. So then he proceeded. You know what he's asked me? He asked me all the questions that I asked when I was in my auntie, my atheist days. Why so many gods? Why God said the wives? Two wives, three wives? Why so many sons? Why the gods can't they have animals to, to, to take them around? Why you caste system in Hinduism? How can you demean humanity? Man is one. This went on and on and on. And every question is a legitimate question, which your children are asking, and I'm sure I don't. Which your children are asking. Of course, they may quietly not mention it to you. But the mind they're asking, what's all this thing? What's your answer? But finally, what happened was, this boy, halfway through or towards the end, he said, he mentioned, are we Christians? He said. Then I knew, he's already converted. So no point mentioning that. I said, listen, you already converted, you already Christian, be a good Christian. Only follow one commandment, honor thy father and mother. That's all. Love God, love your neighbor, don't do service. Finish, do service. Bhakti yoga, karma yoga, that's Christian teaching. Then I went to the father, I said, listen. Your father, I said. What teaching of your religion you ever gave your son? Now what do you want? You want him to have a label as a Hindu and not know anything about a religion, not practice anything, go to bar and drink? At least he wants to be a Christian, let him follow Christianity, let him be a good Christian at least. Heaven's sake. This is the challenge. This is the problem. So this is what we must face now. On one level of understanding Christian, Hinduism. I tell you anybody, when I talk about religion, to when I go overseas, in Sydney for example, Sydney, we have had the Hindu track session, two day sessions, you know, track morning and afternoon. For three years running, the first year we had, 400 people. Second year we had 600 people. Last, this January we went 1,000 people. Until what was there? No, what uh, the was there? 1,000 Hindus packed the hall. 60% of them youngsters. Okay, people could not believe. The youngsters were for two days in this hall. Why? The teaching is the same, but the packaging is differently. We give the science of it. Not because then, you know, all of you must believe to God. God is very, you know, you know, Murugan, Murugan is very great. You must know, Pashivaya, Ram, Dal, all of you. After that, you go away. What, what the, you know what the, you know, you know that the, the evangelical, evangelical Christian groups are taking away Christians from the main, mainline church. Why? They're packaging it. They're giving them budget and songs and they give them dynamic manner, you know. So they wipe it at the, so that it's, religion becomes an exciting thing. Religion must be exciting, you know. How can religion, religion is dull and boring, how can it attract the heart? Religion must touch your heart. And if your children don't know your religion, what is that? I tell you one, one simple thing that stuns people, okay. I tell them, look, look at that. Western science, today Western science. For many, many centuries, Western science thought that the sun was the center of the universe and that all the earth and all the planets went around the sun. Sorry, for centuries, the, the, the Western science thought that earth was the center of the, of the universe and the sun and all the planets went around the earth. You know this? Yes. It's a fact, okay? Now, 